nice and cozy. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, where's we're still doing this tonight? Of course. All right. Okay, we're here. We're here, everybody. Welcome to Spilling Ink. The this is the the three coolest people you're gonna find anywhere on the internet, ever of all time, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, well, at least I I am. This is the Jason Lavelle. I'm here with. Would, is it just playing Katie Salidas today? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing fancy? Yep. All we right, might be well. joined by the J.E. Taylor, though. She did say Ooh, she might stop in. The J.E. Taylor. And then also a returning guest who has her own show and who is absolutely incredible, Christy Stratus. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I can't even tell you guys how many times I've called Christy Christine on this show. Because it just rolls off the tongue so nicely, but it is not Christine. It Don't call not. her Christine. She gets really, really upset about that. <laughs> so this is our this is our talk show and our podcast. If you're just listening to this, where we talk about writing and publishing and books and editing, or maybe nothing at all. Maybe we'll talk about pop tarts for thirty minutes. I mean, that's always an option for us. But before we get into that, I do want to say a special hello to our sponsor, Book Branders. Book Branders is a company that is made for indie authors. And what they do is give you a la carte solutions for all the kind of like pesky little stuff that you have to do to go from okay, I've written a book to now it's published and available for people to read. Uh, things like uh, editing services and formatting and building a website and actually getting it uploaded. So they're a really great company and prices are reasonable. You can contact them at www.bookbranders.com. All right. And I am, I am roasting because my little heater behind me is going like full blast. So I've got to turn that down. You know nothing <laughs> about heat. Nothing at all. It is already triple digits here in Vegas, and it's killing me. Katie, oh I want to tell you. I want to tell you something, Katie. So three days ago, we hit seventy-eight here in Michigan. Right now, it's snowing. Really? Right now? Right now, it's snowing. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fucked up. <laughs> we've had a lot of that kind of stuff too. I'm in New Jersey, so we've had a lot oh. of. Oh. And then, yeah, and then you have a heat wave, and I don't yep. know. <laughs> oh, awesome! You know what? I have been hearing a lot about New Jersey because I have been absolutely obsessed with the my favorite. Oh my god! Do you listen to the My Favorite Murder podcast? I don't. No, I have to check Holy it out. Holy shit! Anyone out there? Check out the My Favorite Murder podcast. It is hilarious and so interesting. It's these it's these two women, and all they do is bullshit around for an hour. But while they're bullshitting shitting around, they're also talking about serial killers and, and stuff like that. It's incredibly interesting. But uh, New Jersey comes up quite a bit. <laughs> a lot of people die in New Jersey. <laughs> I was say, is there a reason for that? Is that like Florida with the crazy people? New Jersey is like the murder capital now. Yeah. Well, in Chicago, Chicago still uh, still up there pretty good. Okay. I'm, I'm so glad I'm not anywhere near that. <laughs> we have our own breed of crazy here. Yeah. Yes. Nice hot crazy. So oh. New Jersey. I didn't know that. I thought you were a Canadian. No. <laughs> really. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm from New Jersey. Okay, you're always just you're always so nice. I just assumed you were Canadian. Thank oh. you. Okay, cool, cool. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, Christy, tell us a little bit about your show because your show is is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So right now I have two shows. One is not currently. I'm trying to figure out like when I'll have time for it again. But um, the one that I'm currently running is uh, Creative Edge Writers Showcase. And that one is on like SoundCloud and iTunes and anywhere you can get podcasts. And basically it's a half hour show that happens twice a month on Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I talk to various authors. They can be any genre. And I usually, you know, I do some regular questions asking them about their books, but I also try to dig into, you know, their blogs and things they've written about in the past and ask some questions that maybe haven't been asked before. So that's, um, that's my favorite part. I really like, finding some things to surprise them with, I guess. <laughs> so that's the one I'm doing now. And um, I also have 
The Writer's Edge, which was on YouTube. Uh, well, it is on YouTube. So that one's on a temporary break. Um, and that's just more to do with my time than anything else. So that one, you can go to um, youtube.com slash The Writer's Edge. And that one was a live panel. So, um, and that was all writing type discussions. So there's a lot of videos still on there that you guys can check out too. It was it was very very professional and Anita yes she had fantastic guests, um, but yeah your your show was so professional it was really an insp inspiration to us because we're just sitting around here and like half the time we're drinking margaritas or smoking or whatever we're doing <laughs> I don't I don't know I think at at one point there was a show where um, and it's legal in Michigan so don't judge me that <laughs> um, a friend had given me some kind of magical brownie and. Uh, <laughs> I it, I had a tough time in on that show. I'm not gonna lie, it was it's a little really rough, long, <laughs> but still very entertaining. Oh, hey, <laughs> Brian <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, but you also write books. I do write books. Yes, yes. this is something yes. I additionally do. <laughs> yeah, I have written two books. Um, they're both in something I call the Dark Victoriana Collection. Two novels, one is called Anatomy of a Darkened Heart, one is called, and the second one is called Brotherhood of Secrets. They're both in the Victorian era um, and Victorian America in particular, and um, they're psychological suspense. So I am currently working on the third, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> maybe, buddy, maybe. <laughs> And that one's going to be a little bit different because it's going to have more of a detective mystery element. But if you know my writing, it's going to be just as dark as the rest of my books. So, yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. Now, awesome. what is your publishing schedule like? How many books do you try and put out per year? Is it one per year? Do you try and, and get more in there? I know you have a lot of other things you do, too. Yeah, well, last year I quit my corporate job. So I really thought that I was going to have loads of time to write. I was like, yeah, I'm going to organize my time so well. Yeah, they're laughing. They get it. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to organize my time so well. I'm going to do this for an hour and that for an hour. I'm going to have all this writing time. And then I got there and I was like, I think I actually have less time than I had before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, as, as an entrepreneur, that's like all I'm doing, you know? So um, I did not have the extra time I thought I would have. Uh, so it's pretty much every other year because it's historical fiction and it takes a lot of research. So um, I'm hoping to put out the third book this year. That would be every other year is like 2015, 2017, 2019. And you will get a good kick out of this. When I first started publishing, um, self-pubbing, I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to put out a book in, I think it was October, 2015. And I was like, Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I thought um, I'm just going to put out like all these novelettes and like two more full length novels in the time of a time span of two or three years. And wow, was I mistaken. I had no idea how long it was going to take me to write these things. So it is like an every other year thing with short stories coming out in between. You know, I feel like your your publishing schedule is a lot closer to to mine because I am I, I've got so much going on and and so it's like I'm I'm lucky if I can get a book out in a year and I didn't last year you know last year it was republishing old books with a new publisher um, so this year there won't be a novel but there'll be a couple short stories you know and and I'm okay with it you know I spent so long and I you know who I blame. I blame Katie for this. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because I was just humming along, just this nobody indie writer self-publishing my books. And I got invited on this show, Spilling Ink. And I was on there with uh, Kendra Souter. And those two little monsters, I'm pointing in the wrong direction. She's <laughs> there, there. They're like, well, the, the key is you've got to keep putting out more work and you've got to you've got to keep the readers interested. Bam, 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 bam. And I'm like, oh, really? I have to do that? I'm, I'm just like chilling over here, man, with the with the brownies and everything. And so, <laughs> so I'm trying to write all these freaking books. And now I've got like five. five I know it is Katie. <laughs> <laughs> And then I come on. I'm the queen yeah. of taking out the door. <laughs> this one right here. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna do the, the Brady Bunch thing. This one here. She writes faster than I do, and makes me feel like I'm the slow, lazy writer. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever speed you're doing it. it is, you know what, Brian? You're right. She made me fat too. She did. 
<laughs> but whatever whatever speed you're doing it, you're you're fine. You're fine. If you're a full time writer and you have deadlines that you've got to hit, well, then that's a different story. But you know, if you're if you're an indie author or if you're just you're kind of doing it on the side, then take all the time you need. Yeah. Make sure you get that manuscript perf perfected before you submit it or send it to Amazon. But yeah. There's no shame in taking a little bit longer because oh. you know, usually it comes out better if you're going to take the time to really do it right. So there's definitely no shame in that. I know that Amazon rewards putting out book after book after book as fast as you can, but you know. Yeah. Well, and just, <laughs> just remember that those of us, these, these two right here, uh, right here that take a little bit longer to put out books. Just remember that our books are so, so much better than the ones oh. on the other <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> you know what I do to my characters? <laughs> yeah, I would not cross her. No, no. Do not cross her. I didn't cross you. I didn't cross you. <laughs> no, I, I've, seen, I've seen what you do to characters, Jane. Holy crap. Yes. I, just, I just read your story on, on my podcast. Jesus. Yes. You're, like a, you're a freaking monster. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you listen to that, Katie? I haven't listened to that one yet, but oh, now I need to. Yeah. You have, oh, oh yeah. yeah, it is pretty freaking brutal. But see, I've yeah. been beta reading for Jane for a while, so I kind of know when she tells me, "Oh, wait till you get to this part," and I'm like, "Oh no, oh no, you're gonna make me cry or or something." And sure enough, every time. Which genre? Which genre is it? Um, paranormal suspense. Oh, okay, cool. So that's that's pretty much the. <laughs> um. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> She's lucky I read on my computer because if I read it on a tablet, that tablet would go flying across the room. <laughs> Have you guys ever read? No. In in my defense, and Brian, I know you've read this one, uh, so feel free to, to comment. A book called Exquisite Corpse. Any any of you? All right. Here. I didn't finish this book. Um, I, I got a few chapters in, and at one point... This murderer has killed a boy after engaging, after, after having sex with this boy, he kills the boy. And it describes in very graphic detail things that he does with the nether regions and his mouth. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude, really come I, I don't really need you to, to paint every detail. I, I can get this shit, okay? <laughs> but... Anyhow, it was one of the most graphic things I've ever read, and and not pornography. You know, this was this was supposed to be fiction. Um, but yeah, so exquisite corpse. If you ever really, really want to be scarred, there, there you go. <laughs> if you want to be scarred? Read oh. Georgia Rain. <laughs> Georgia Rain. Yes. What is it's, that? It, it, it's about a serial killer who carves up kids. Oh, but, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Can't, I can't do kids, man. That's, that's. Yeah, it's too far for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, no. That, that's one of mine. <laughs> is it yours? Uh -huh. Jesus. Brutal. She's Not a freaking monster. Georgia Rain is mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's in my C. William series. <laughs> oh Lord! Yeah, remind me to stay away from that. <laughs> yeah. Well, Katie, Katie read some of the earlier, earlier betas of the Ryan Chronicles, so she knows my main character, Tom. Didn't? Um, did you read those? Mm -hmm. Yep. Didn't have a have a tongue for part of that. <laughs> that was an interesting twist, though. I, I kind of dug that. <laughs> Georgia, Rain, Georgia Rain tells how he lost it. I need to go back and maybe read them, although now I'm too scared to. Oh, oh yeah, I, that, was that was the only book I ever wrote that gave me nightmares. Oof. I oh, like yeah. it. Well, and it speak started of because of the nightmare, and then I wrote it because you know I needed to stop having that nightmare. <laughs> well, and, and speaking of no tongues, have any of you guys watched The Silence, the Netflix original that just came out? No. It's it's not bad. You know, it it, it really isn't. I, I thought it was a, a fun movie. Um, it was. It kind of felt like they they took the idea of um, a quiet place and just ran from ran from there um but anyhow that, that was pretty good but the no tongue thing reminded me of that 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been there too. Yeah. You get in the zone writing it and you look back later and you're like, oh man, yeah, I, I crossed some freaking lines here. Now, but, Chrissy, you're an editor. Have you had to edit some really gnarly scenes that kind of made you cringe? I guess I've been lucky so far. I have not <laughs> had that kind of a thing. Um, I will no. send you something later. Oh. My <laughs> yeah, like, I can definitely handle violence, but it's the kids thing or, or animals I cannot handle. Like even if I'm listening to an audiobook, I have to turn it down. I just, I can't listen. I just can't do it. <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a scene in uh, Whispers in the Shadows, my my book, where um, it, absolutely horrible animal uh, brutality happens, and you've had a number of people told me that they they put the book down for a while after that. But mm -hmm. it was it was kind of the the scene that that started the book, um, and it was a it was a true story. It was a, a true thing that happened, and so that's why it. Uh, why it ended up in the book but yeah it was extremely di disturbing yeah you know, anita just send her all your worst parts <laughs> yeah. no, that was a great you should, you should read so, book if you haven't. Yeah. so guys have have you ever seen and brian and anita the movie teeth no i have a feeling i don't even want to hear it but go on you, do. you totally want to see it <laughs> okay i i'm i'm going to this isn't really a spoiler because you, you get it right away. Vagina dentata. If you just if you if you look that up, it's gonna it'll tell you everything. And I'll tell you what, my, my wife and I my wife and I watched this movie, and uh, we cracked up the whole time. It was it's it's pretty like a horror movie so bad it's it's hilarious. Oh, but, uh, okay. but yes, Brian, you would love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> uh, oh, wow, is this a record now? We're only what sixteen minutes in, and we've got completely off the deep end. Oh. I'm, like, I'm like, I'm glad I have the pocket door closed. <laughs> it lost it. <laughs> but this is not even close to a record. I think my record's like thirty seconds or something. Yeah, that's it? true. Yeah, <laughs> you started yeah. the show off on the wrong foot that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Yes. Oh yeah, Brian. So are the magical brownies legal in Pennsylvania? <laughs> Wait, where is he? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to go to Pennsylvania next year. Prepping. Prepping now. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, come on, Brian, catch up. This delay is killing me. <laughs> Hey, got important things to talk about here, man. Clearly. Uh, well, Jane, how have you been? I'm good. I'm up in New Hampshire. Oh, nice. At, what at the in-laws' in house? Oh, that's so why you're room not here. Behind me is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. room. <laughs> so, what did you think? Did you listen? Listen to your? Uh... Yeah, yeah. I was sitting there, and, and my husband just looked over at me. He goes. Just like that, as as it's going, he goes, "Yeah." I said, "You know, I wrote this." He goes, "I know, I know, you wrote that." <laughs> did it sound okay, though? Yes, it did. Good. Yes. Good. Good. But he good. was just like, he was like, you know, looking at me like you're you're such a sick woman. <laughs> I'm like, well, you buried me. <laughs> got a point there. Okay, hey, I've got a question. I've got a question. Yeah. Since all of us participate in podcasts and including our audience members today. How many of you go back and listen to or rewatch your episodes after the fact, or is it one and done? You put it out there for others to rewatch, and you're like, "Nope, don't need to see it again." I I, I do rewatch it. <laughs> okay. I I, I had my hand up first. Yes, we did. <laughs> okay, Hermione. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the. <laughs> <laughs> so Christy, you go back and rewatch? I do. Well, you know what? I, I started doing it because um with Creative Edge Writer Showcase, I I take out like a two minute clip and put it as a Facebook mm -hmm. teaser. So I ended up like what happens is I'm I'm looking for the teaser I want because I can't even remember, you know, like every part of the interview. And um I end up just rewatching the entire thing. <laughs> so <laughs> I do. It's not intentional, but um, I do. And then, you know, obviously when you rewatch something, you can kind of, you know, think of, was there anything else I would have wanted to 
ask or anything. And then you can either like follow up and have like an extra something on the side or think of it for next time, something like that. But I think it's kind of fun because I don't know about you guys, but when I'm in interview mode, it's like my, my mind is yes on what they're saying, but also on what I'm going to say next and like planning at the same time. So I don't always get like the full enjoyment of their answer. So it's kind of nice to re-listen. I, I don't usually rewatch spilling ink afterwards uh, because video is harder for me to, to have time to rewatch it. It's a lot easier if it's just audio. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I will, I will always re-listen to my audio show um, just to make sure everything's okay before, before I send it, send it on its way. But, but this one, it's, it's a lot tougher. Although the last episode, the episode we were referring to earlier with uh, delicious desserts, um, I was rewatching it because my wife was pulling screenshots and sending it to people at work of look, look what Jason was doing. <laughs> so anyhow, Jane, do you uh, rewatch Spilling Ink? Once in a while. Yes. Yeah. Once in a while I do if I've missed something or, you know, like I've been distracted, like, you know, when my kids are home, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, I missed what they said. I think it was interesting. I want to go see it again. But yeah, I watched the I watched the one with Jonathan and um, Allison again because, you know, that was the the day of the you know memorial service. So I, I wanted to see that again and see you know what everybody said. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, outside of that, eh, if I'm if I'm like stuck writing, I'll I'll go back and watch one just for you know getting into the writing mindset with other writers. So, <laughs> hi Mickey, hi Rebecca. Sorry, I just wanted to say hi. Okay. Katie, what about you? I know you don't go back through and watch them. You know, I, I do to some extent as I'm uh, downloading and I'm prepping them to go over to YouTube. I've been doing the three words thing lately to describe each show. So as I'm listening, I try to come up with the three words. But Artemis is your biggest fan. She yeah. watches every episode all the time. Um, usually when we leave the house, I leave something on for her because, you know, Huskies have anxiety. They don't like to be alone. So I always leave something on with familiar voice and spilling ink is like the perfect way for me to do it. I just turn YouTube on, put our channel on and let it run. So she watches it all the time. <laughs> That's sweet. It's like this mommy, never, mama's, mama's always around. That's great. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's too funny. Oh, yes. You know what? I just found, oh God, what the hell is the name of it? Um, I was just scrolling through Netflix. Chambers. Have any of you guys watched that? I haven't started it. Started it yet. It, it looks like it's a horror one. Like a, a young girl has to get a, a heart transplant, and then things start getting really creepy and crazy after that. I'm like, oh, this looks like it has good potential because some of those Netflix originals are really good, man. But yeah, yeah. Sorry, they just. Popped up. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. I love Stranger Things. That's a fun. That's yeah. a really fun show. And that's yeah. that was cool because you can watch it with your kids too. Oh, look at that. Rebecca's giving us all the love tonight. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> Rebe Rebecca is drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See, now that's oh. what makes this job fun, though, because it's not really a job. It's like a weekly hangout with all of our friends. And even mm -hmm. when we bring new authors, it's just kind of like making new friends. It's it's never um, it's never stressful, you know. Sometimes if you go into an interview, you're always stressed about what are they going to ask you, and we've always tried to maintain just that kind of keep it conversational, you know, make it just like hanging out in the living room, and it seems to always work that way. You know what? You're you're right, and my attitude towards interviews has completely changed since this whole podcasting things. Not many. I I listened to Platoholics. I was yeah, there. Brand new. You got to get a few more episodes. Yeah. See the yeah. I yeah, read you, that as Platoholics. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to get a few under your belt there. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know the uh, the the woman. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, you crazy kids out oh, there. We're getting all the love from our friends in the audience. Yes, indeed. But no, doing the podcast, 
Oh, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, doing the podcast totally changes, uh, I think, how you approach speaking to people, even out in the real world. Um, I think it gives you a lot more confidence. um, And even if we sometimes bumble over our words, we're just used to rolling right through it. Um, There was a there's a gentleman and and he's coming in for the same summer series as you are, Katie. Um, He's come into the the library here in Holland to give a talk about his book and his book sounds fantastic. And the gal at the library had sent me a message and said, you know, he just there's something about him. I don't know if he's really full of himself or or what it is, um, you know, but he wants to meet ahead of time and talk things over uh, first. And so I just met with him a few days ago at the library and he's he's not full of himself. He's he's not a weirdo and he's not creepy or anything like that. He's He's just, just, (laughs) no, it's, it's actually, it's actually the opposite. He's, Mm -hmm. he's an, an older man. He's like 67 or 68 and he's a lifelong salesman. And so he's okay. used to just talking and talking and talking and talking, and that sometimes gets misinterpreted the wrong way. And so this this meeting, which should have been five minutes, where I say, okay, this is the, the program for your show, ended up being 45 minutes of me listening to how his mother escaped from Czechoslovakia during the Second, the Second World War, which is kind of fantastic. <laughs> so oh. I'm really looking forward to talking to him, but it's just it's people who speak for a living or even as a hobby, like like most of us do, I, I think it just comes more naturally, and we just keep going and going and going until somebody's like, "Jason, shut up! You shouldn't be talking anymore. We're all just staring at you and not saying anything." Okay. You guys do you ever end up like <laughs> if you're in like a I, I don't know if you guys are introverts or extroverts, but like when you're in a situation where there's you know you're with a bunch of people and all of a sudden everything goes silent. And like nobody can think of something to say. Do you find yourself suddenly interview, interviewing everyone? Like you're just asking your interview questions. Like, this is where yeah. it's in. This is my social side now. <laughs> it's like the rules of dating. Get them to talk about them. So you start yeah. with, okay, it's yeah. like, tell me more about the right. shirt you're wearing. You know, it's something to get them talking again. Yes. And, then, and then they get going and you just silence. pause and make them keep going. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I've I learned to be okay with silence, but this show has made it so I am no longer afraid of being on camera. I mean, I worked in the television industry and I, I was you know used to shoving a mic in somebody's face, but not being on camera. When the camera turned to me, I'd freeze. So this... <laughs> Jason. <It's gone. laughs> so this has made it so that I'm you know much more relaxed around this, which, you know, is great, you know, 20 years after I left the television station. (laughs) (laughs) You don't want to tell them. (laughs) That's what I can do now. (laughs) Yeah, well, no, I I couldn't go back there. Well, not after they read what you wrote. They're like, oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> well, my, my bosses at my day job have, have read what I've written. So they're duly afraid of me, which is, you know, powerful. <laughs> yeah, <that'd be> <laughs> that's, that's the power pose right there. Yes. <laughs> well, she's she's not afraid of me. She's in my So, Christy, you... You're taking a break from your your flagship show. Is it? Do you think it's going to be coming back, or do you foresee that being just gone for now? No, I do want to bring it back. It's really just time. You know, the time. Like I said, when I when I decided to leave my corporate job, I really thought I was going to have a lot more time, and I didn't think it'd be an issue. So, what I did was. I decided I was going to do the Writer's Edge. Like um, I did it twice a month, and then I did Creative Edge Writers Showcase twice a month, and I was on every week on a Thursday at 9 p.m. doing like a show. And in one way, it was fun, and in the other way, I was like, I have no time for like all this other stuff that needs to get, get done. And I realized that I had to temporarily pause something, so I had to pause the Writer's Edge because it takes a lot more work. Um, but I really love it. So I definitely want to bring it back. I love interviewing people, but also I love the live panels and like finding the people that I think will give the best information or, you know, diverse information or something. So I definitely wouldn't say it's like dead by any means. It's just a matter of how am I going to fit it 
back in. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to, unfortunately. Yeah. And I didn't know I didn't know about doing this um my new podcast, the Raven podcast. I didn't know if I would be able to have time for it. I didn't know how freaked out I was I would get because I have such high anxiety about things. And so the initial plan was get months and months worth of interviews and stories done ahead of time. And then I'm just kind of chilling and maintaining things. Only it didn't it didn't quite work out that way. Um I, I got some of that done and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, so people got interested in it. Now I'm now I'm actually having to work again. But it's it's not so much that I'm overwhelmed, which I think is a really important thing because even when it's something you love, like like your show, um, if you start to become overwhelmed by it, then it really takes that joy away. Um, yeah, and it's it's a shame. I think I don't know. I keep I keep thinking like this is a good time for maybe if I didn't do it on YouTube or something because you know how it is with YouTube. Like they'll show they'll share your show depending on if they feel like it, and so one show will get like, you know, some attention and that's great. And the right people will see it and maybe they'll be inspired. And then the other ones just sit there and you're like, okay, but I want people to be able to learn and like see it and get what they need from it. It's very frustrating with YouTube. So like you guys have yeah. gone to Facebook and then you, you know, and Josh like does Twitch and then you put it on YouTube or something. So yeah. maybe I'll end up doing something more like that. I just, you know, it's a shame when you go to all that effort and you have these experts speaking and they're giving such good advice and you just know nobody's going to see it, you know? Yeah. And it, that is, it is so frustrating. And I really, I mean, YouTube, it, it, it is what it is, but like you said, it's gotten to the point where it, it, it kind of sucks. And when Katie found this program, this uh, stream yard so that we could do the live Facebook videos, um, it really made a huge difference just in interaction, you know, on, on the comments, because that's really what we want is, mm -hmm. is people interacting because then we know that you're out there watching us. Um, and we didn't have that on YouTube. And you know, what's, what's interesting. And I just looked at this today is um, our, our older shows and the current shows are on YouTube. And then I upload the audio to Podbean just to, to have available as a podcast. And if we don't do any promoting of the YouTube shows, there's almost no views at all. However, those ones that are on Podbean with almost no promotion at all, they're still getting nearly the, the same amount of views. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's interesting. And, and I, it just leads me to believe that it's, it's gotta be YouTube, you know, there's something, there's something there that's just not working. So we'll continue to put the, the videos up there. You know, once this is done, Katie uh, downloads them and puts them up on YouTube for anyone who wants to watch them there. And I think that's great. But I think that as a, as the, the primary broadcaster, I just don't think it works. And I like what Josh is doing too. I think that, you know, he and his wife are of a course, uh, really big gamers, uh, Joshua, sorry, I keep calling him Josh, um, but they're really big gamers. And so Twitch is kind of the, the gamer platform. Um, and I think that's cool too, because they can interact right on there as well. So yeah, yeah. my son has a Twitch that yep. he was doing for quite a while. So, yep. cause yep. YouTube just wasn't doing it for him either. <laughs> yep. I was, I was just watching, uh, watching his show the other night and, uh, my 17 year old leaned over at me and she was like, why are you on Twitch? And I was like, it's just something we do. And she was like, I had a Twitch. I was like, all right, <laughs> I know what it is too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the interaction though that makes it that much more enjoyable because it's it's fun to hang out with the, with our guests and talk with our authors and all that but to be able to get the the uh, viewers to chime in with their questions to add their little you know funny one-liners like rebecca and uh to interact with us as well it just adds that extra level of interest to the show mm -hmm. Definitely. I think that matters a lot. Without that, it's not half as much fun even. Yeah. Christy, what is the name of the, um, of your short show that you do for, uh, for the authors on the air network? That is the creative edge writer showcase. That's the writer showcase. Yeah. I would like to come on there sometime. So I don't, I don't know who arranges that. Is that you or Mickey? It's Mickey. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to come on there sometime. I think that'd be uh that'd be fun. Cause I've got, I'm doing a short story book. Ooh, what does Brian say? 
Oh, I like how we all have to pause and like read. <laughs> There's so <laughs> much to read. Like, We're all reading. <laughs> Brian, Brian, honey, this works much better if you do one sentence at a time. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what it was, Rebecca. Oh, isn't the the Twitch like the this thing? Is that what that is? <laughs> the only reason I know that is because that is now Zoe's signature move. Oh, <laughs> she does the thumbs down dab, so it's more like this. <laughs> Is that, oh yeah, that that's smooth. I like that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and Zoe's cooler than me. So. Yeah. Oh, and she gets into it too. I mean, she like sends the arm out flying. <laughs> hey, Brian, uh, would you please, Brian? I need you to to send us a little video of you doing the whip nay nay, please. <laughs> <laughs> and then follow that up with the the Superman by uh, Soldier Boy, because that would be excellent. Now, speaking of of podcasts, Brian's got the Plotaholics, which they they've just started that one up, and it's kind of it, it's funny how we've all kind of put our shows in line so that we're not stepping on each other's toes. Brian, so who who are we talking about here? Brian can. So you've got a Thursday night show, a Friday night show, a Saturday night show, a Sunday night. Like there's one, two, three, four, all the way across. You could watch author shows every day of the week at this I point. I know. I can't watch TV anymore. We've all naturally <laughs> fallen in line, which is great. Yeah, it's real. I, I agree with you. I, I noticed that, um, and especially with like going to now and all that, definitely. You, oh, oh, Brian. Uh, hey, Urkel could dance, man. You'd, you'd make a great Urkel, I think. <laughs> oh, do you? did you ever see that show that he did? I, I don't remember what the actor's actual name is, Urkel, but he did that sh this show where it was people, they would turn out all the lights. It was like blackout or something, and they had to reach in and feel stuff and figure out what they were and not be afraid enough to touch it. Only some of these things were like snakes and cockroaches and spiders and shit. No. Man, that was actually really, uh, that was really interesting. It was scary. I would never do it. whip and or nay-nay. Section is so good today. <laughs> I feel like we're all old, except for Christy. Christy, are you, are you 30 yet? Should I tell you or no? I don't know. Maybe don't maybe know. I'm not. Maybe I'm 26. I would say you look like you're in your 20s. <laughs> I am. I am 30. I'm <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> but I everyone. Nobody thinks I'm 30. I am the oldest one here. <laughs> yeah, Jane over there is 38. I mean, she's got me by a couple months. Oh, wait, I'm 39. <laughs> 54. Oh, wow, really? Yep. In July. Wow. Yep. wow. We have a great grandbaby soon. I have one. <laughs> Do you really? Yes. Holy cow. I have a grandson. My my 22-year-old or 23-year-old daughter had one. <laughs> wow. wow. Well, actually, she just turned 24. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Brian said Christy's like 19. <laughs> okay. I, 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 Christy I, looks like my daughter. <laughs> Yeah, I've had people ask if I've graduated college yet. <laughs> yes, I'm that's like, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that's my, awesome. My daughter's wow. this little thing. I'm four ten. She's four ten, and she's like a twig, and she's a a wedding coordinator. <laughs> she she's the wedding coordinator. Okay. So. So when she goes in there, you know, people think this, she, this little, you know, sweet girl, oh my God, she becomes like, you know, the Nazi instructor. <laughs> do this, do this, do this. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> people are like afraid of this little, <laughs> little beast. <laughs> little beast. I can see Zoe being this way. <laughs> <laughs> she will be. 
<laughs> she had, we were at a, a play date last weekend where we went over to a friend of ours house and our kids have known each other for years. So she's got older ones. I've got older ones and younger ones. And Zoe goes over to there and plays with their, um, he's five now. And at first they're playing okay. And Zoe gets on this, this angel costume, <laughs> but he wants to wear the angel costume. So he <laughs> manages to get it away from her. She throws a fit. Next thing you know, the angel costumes on the floor, she goes storming off. Cause now she doesn't want it. 20 minutes later, she sends the little boy back to fetch the angel costume and bring it to her so she can put it back on. Damn oh. right. <laughs> oh. The girl. <laughs> I was like, you saw that, right? She's like, yeah. I saw it. <laughs> uh, well, well, Brian says that Jane's daughter is the Red Skull. Oh. Really is Jane's daughter or Katie's daughter? Jane's daughter. Oh, and okay. Zoe, but, but Zoe is also a supervillain. Oh, wait. Yeah. Supervillain, yo. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Rebecca, you are not wrong at all. Okay, so you guys can't see the comments that I can. I mean, people watching, um, yeah. unless you're actually looking at the comments, then you can see the comments. Uh, but everybody fears chihuahuas. There's a good reason for that. Chihuahuas freaking bite. If there's one dog that's going to bite me when they come into the vet's office, it's going to be a freaking chihuahua. Really? Those dogs are... I, I I have a Chihuahua and I have one, but they are. I'll tell you what. If they were bigger, they'd be like the most dangerous dog out there. Holy crap! I like that you say that you host your podcast, The Raven, with your dog. That's, that's <laughs> with my, my Chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it it was kind of. I wasn't going to do that. And the day that I, I had finally gotten this mic set up and I was getting everything on the wall and ready and I sat down and she just like hopped up here on my lap and I was like, Oh, well, that'd be kind of cute. You'll just be my little co-host. And then she was like, Argh. I was like, all right, fine. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't mess with chihuahuas. <laughs> <laughs> that's creative <laughs> that's very good <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh shoot it's always gonna uh, have a reputation here soon <laughs> that's good I, I i'd rather have my my daughters have a reputation of being just badasses and don't mess with them than anything else that's that's the reputation i want them to have don't mess with them yeah you know? yeah Katie, were we supposed to talk about something tonight? Nope, nope, not at all. Excellent, excellent, <laughs> excellent. We <laughs> 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 can talk forever. <laughs> that works perfect with my style of not paying attention. So. <laughs> Oh my God, Brian is just, he keeps going. Zoe's the reason Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to compile it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> mm. You know what? Sciences. <laughs> Straight shooter with upper management written all over her. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and this is like oh, drink, right. drinks with authors on the wrong night. I like it. Right? I'm right. only drinking water. And I, I I, Christy, are you drinking a large glass of, of red wine and going like this every once in a while? I, well, I'm not, but I could be if oh. that's what you want. <laughs> that's that's how I picture you with your dark Victoriana stuff. You're just this. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, you could be the headmistress on that that show, the uh, yeah. that picnic at Hanging Rock show or whatever it is. Have uh, you have you watched that? No, no, I haven't. I, but I, I can make commercials, I think. Okay, and and really, that's about all I know. My wife watches it, and sometimes I walk through the room. But she's just she's dressed in this you know Victorian garb. She's in Australia, and you that could be you. I'm gonna do it. You could do <laughs> this. Uh, and when you when you when you go to convention go, go to conventions and stuff to sell your dark Victoriana, you're in Victorian getup. That would be cool. That would, that would be, be awesome. cool. I should just not have a booth and just walk around in my cool costume. Yes. <laughs> Here you go, peddling books. Have one. <laughs> uh, 
Oh man, dude, if I could afford it, I would totally do that. I would just give books out to everybody. I would, I would give you all free books if I could. I mean, you four, I, I would gladly, but the rest of you, I mean, do order that, please. Yeah. yeah. Ah, yes, good stuff. Well, Christy, I was kind of distracted by Brian and laughing at him while you were finishing up telling us what your newest book is going to be about. Could you tell us what the newest book is going to be about again? I heard Detective. <laughs> yeah. That was it. It's the third book in the Dr. Troyana <laughs> collection. And um, all my books are standalones if you want to read them that way. Um, but they do build off each other. So this one is going to build off the second book um, in particular. And um, it's going to follow a character from the second book, uh, Timothy, who I can't, I mean, it's the tough part. I don't know if you guys have this problem, but like the tough part is that the third book is like a spoiler for the third book. So like its existence is a little bit of a spoiler, which is annoying and makes it difficult to talk about. But anyway, well, kind, kind of like when you go to see Captain Marvel and then they show you the preview for the next Spider-Man that's supposed to come out right. later this year. And I'm like, I haven't seen Endgame yet, and there's another Spider-Man coming. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, sorry, go ahead with, with your story. That was a good story. It tells you too much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, it's going to follow one of the characters. Um, he starts out uh, very young. He's in his teens. Like, he was in the second book, and then uh, we're going to skip ahead, like, 10 years, about a decade. And then we'll be in um, 1860s America, which is the Civil War era. Um, so that gives me a lot of opportunity. But basically, he's going to um, become a detective and study with um, one of the greatest detectives of all time, Pinkerton. So that's going to be really fun. I've done a lot of research so far. I have more to do. Um, but like, that's one of my favorite parts because those, I mean, gosh, Alan Pinkerton is like, he's so fascinating. And uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to get to use that. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Jason. Wait, I'm calling you. There, there was an actual man named Pinkerton? Yes. Yeah. No yes. shit. First private or first in America, um, private detective agency. Oh, so wow. it's, yeah, it's really cool. It gives me a good opportunity. My historical fiction hasn't involved actual historical figures. It's just been historically accurate. So this is my first, like, delving into that. Um, so that's going to be really fun. That sounds awesome. And how hey, much do you get lost in your, your uh, research? Uh, uh, I get so lost. Last time I learned, like, how to make a lock, like, from scratch. Nice. It was too much. It was too much information. <laughs> but at first, I was like, oh, I need to know all the information about locks and keys and how to make them and what they're made out of and what do we, you know, tools and this stuff. Yeah, that was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, was cool. It was cool. And then I got to a point where I was really getting, like, too deep, and I was like, I'm not going to use any of this. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> stop. No. Last year, I learned how to pick a lock because we came home from a camping trip and my my wife, um, we think it was her, um, left the keys to our camper on top of the camper when we drove off from the campsite. So I had to learn to legit pick a lock with the two little things and make it work. And I was so freaking proud of myself. But I feel like... Do you have a 751 key to get into the... <laughs> underneath what? the box? <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, you, Dan, camper, you should know this. Well, no, it's just a pop-up camper. It's not a fancy one like oh, yours. Oh wait, okay. I did want to. I did want to ask you because your your new place looks awesome. What's the difference between? Why is that like a semi-permanent one? What's the difference between that and one that you tow behind? The the slide outs are manually pulled out, and they're meant to stay out once they're manually pulled out. Oh, okay. Okay. And, I was... and if I have an internet next weekend, what I'll do is I'll walk around the little area cool. and I'll show everybody the, <laughs> the new camper for the show. It, it looks really nice. I, I was impressed. I was like, man, look at the freaking awesome windows on the on the front. Yeah. That's beautiful. And the little it, fireplace. <laughs> it, yeah. Christy, Christy, I kind of feel like it's a, a little bit of kismet that you're on the show tonight because I didn't know that I needed you, but I do need you for something. Yeah. I am writing a short story. I, I have written a short story for an anthology this coming fall, this fall. Mm -hmm. um, and it take, takes place in 1890s. Mm -hmm. And I need an editor for it. And also I need someone who knows anything about history, which I don't. Um, 
so I was thinking you might be perfect. Do you take freelance jobs? Or are you are you all in the company? No, yeah, no, I take it's my company. So yeah, I can okay. take yours. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a lot of fun. I that love doing stuff. That would be awesome. That would be really, really cool. Cause I just gotta make stuff up. I mean, I, I do love history, but I don't know that much. You know, I know these little pinpoints like World War II. I know a lot about World War II for no reason. Just because it's interesting. <laughs> but yeah. So yes, that was it. So um how are you guys doing today? <laughs> Very good. I, I got like three hours of sleep. <laughs> So that's why I was like, I was completely off and I was out getting comforters for the new trailer. <laughs> like, I saw that thing. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, they were going to take us on a detour to show us the work on the church in the area. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, and Darren's like, what? And I'm like, I need to be on the show in like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Katie, no, I'm like, I, I was so completely off on time. <laughs> you made it. Yay. Yes, yes, I'm sorry I'm late, but I got my confidence. <laughs> That's what's important. Yes. <laughs> For the wooden uh. bed. <laughs> we definitely need to see the new camper once you've got it all situated. Yes, yes. We, Christy, we have a summer place up in York, Maine on the beach in a seasonal camping ground. So, um, you know, we, we got a new camper this week, this actually last week, and we need to build the deck because they're going to do a three season room on it once we build the deck. So, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that sounds cool. It looks <laughs> out to do it too. <laughs> So that's that that trailer is something that can be because it, it's not a fifth wheel. It looks like it could be towed with a regular truck if need yeah. be to get there. Now, it, and you don't have to tell me exactly. You could give me like a ballpark because I don't. I think that I've I've told you guys before. Our plan is when Abby's out of high school to move someplace warmer and mm -hmm. set up in something just like a, a big RV type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, what does something like what you got usually run is that like a hundred thousand dollar thing or what's the no range on no no it wasn't um mm. with the add room <laughs> with the three season room which is a hard top um awning and you know fiberglass walls fiberglass aluminum walls um it was like 60. oh well that's pretty reasonable yeah yeah and then the other one, the other thing I was wondering about too is that, um, what do you p pay then in a in a lot rent, you know, to to stay there every night? Uh, well, it's not nightly; it's seasonal. Okay. So for May first to October fifteenth, I think it's sixty five hundred. Okay. Is that and, is that and good? Now, or? And now we, yeah, it actually <laughs> if, if you break it down. You know, when we were younger, it was a lot. It was it was less because it's gone up every year. But um, you figure if you take a vacation for a week somewhere with a family of four, you're going to eat that up pretty quickly. Yeah. So, well, and, and we go from May first, October fifteenth, <clears throat> and now we work there Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So we're only home on Wednesdays. Okay. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, in this. <laughs> job likes us so yeah. they let us do this that's awesome <laughs> well and the place the place down in florida that uh, we want to go is actually a, a friend of mine owns a zoo down there which I'm, i've talked plenty about on here but he um he has two sites for uh an RV, rv campers that were just mm -hmm. kind of built into the place but it's it's just dirt you know it's just packed earth it's, it doesn't have any kind of foundational support or anything like that but is that something where you could use a, a camper like what you have yeah well we wanted the one with the peak roofs more like the tiny houses but the campground won't do that because it'll change their zoning oh. so we're like oh please and i said no <laughs> i'm like okay so um you know and and we can only go up to 37 feet not the 40 feet or more so Okay. Okay. And we went from a thirty to a thirty-seven, which you know, seven feet makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, when you're in a camper, for sure. Yes. Nope, Brian, 
you you totally got to come down to the zoo, man. We, in, in fact, we should plan a couple's trip. Brian Tan, his lovely new bride, and me and my wife will go down to the zoo, we'll play with all the animals. I can get you bit by any animal you want. He will let me go into any enclosure I ask, and you can get your ass bit by something. It, it's going to be... It's going to be a good time, except for do the they tiger. Have I was going to say, do they have tigers? <laughs> he, he will not. He will not let me in with the the big cats. So I, I did kind of lie. Anything else I can get in with the big cats? No. The bobcats? Yes, we can go in with. I, they're kind of scary though too. <laughs> the, bo the bobcats are scary because you don't really see them coming. They kind of sneak around and and all, with all the I've decorations and boom, oh, bobcat. <laughs> I've seen a bobcat out that window. No really? kidding. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep, along with bears and, and deer. and I haven't seen a moose up here, but I'm sure there will be at some point in time. Moose are scary, man. Moose are They're scary big. creatures. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to They're run into wild. one of those. Yeah. And hippos. You know, what's funny is hippo is probably the animal that's scariest to me. Really? Yeah. yeah. They're pretty they are, wild. They, are, like they oh. are extremely aggressive because they want to survive but so much so that they will chase you down and they don't want to scare you off they want to kill you they want to eliminate the threat so um yeah they they, they scare the shit out of me <laughs> uh, well you know i <laughs> uh, i'm always asking bri bri on a date that's my that's my girl surprise <laughs> <laughs> me she killed a bobcat why would you kill a bobcat rebecca jeez girl you're supposed rebecca to bring it into works. bring it into your life and nurture it and love it <laughs> oh brian could beat a moose in a fight though. Be killed but bobcats <laughs> <laughs> yeah. kind of scary too i'd be you know what any wild animal i'm not going near it <laughs> as brave as Jason over here. One day you're going to come in and tell us a story, and you're going to like be missing a hand. Yes. Or something. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll lift the golden hand. That's 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 the way I want to go out. Is I want to go out because I've gone on this awesome uh, sightseeing charter, and somebody falls in the water into the ocean, and a great white shark is coming up to attack him. I dive in, save the person by beating off the great white shark. It kills me, but I die a hero. That's my okay. plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's my plan. <laughs> something else, but <laughs> the editor's in. <laughs> uh, well, I feel like everybody has really learned a lot today from watching this show. I feel like all of you are much better writers and everything else that you do in your life now. Yeah, pretty much all. Thanks to Christy. Pretty much thanks to Christy. <laughs> Poor Christy hasn't said much. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait a second here. Brian, oh, Brian says, I'll eat a great white, but I'll, I thought he said, I'll be a great white. And I was just talking about the great white eating me. And I'm like, wait, what, what's happening right now? I, I don't know what's happening. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like it anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, goody. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. The comments over here are killing me. They're great. <laughs> All right. Well, Katie, is there anything else we want to talk about tonight besides the important topics we've already covered? Yeah, I think I think we have covered a lot of important topics. Oh, look, there's the cat. Oh yeah, there's, there's Leah. Cat. Hi Leah. It How's it going? Cat. <laughs> That's the studio cat. Oh, oh yes. Lay on the keyboard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Well, I've had a good time tonight. I thought that was this was fun. The comment section is going to be very interesting to reread later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> uh, oh, goodness. Well, Katie, you want to wrap us up? I think we are done for, for the week. Um, Christy, thank you again for hanging out with us. You are always welcome back to join in the um, 
insanity. I think oh, we'll call it that. She, she ain't coming. She's not coming back now. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoy it. It's always so much fun. Right. It, it, like we said, it's kind of like just hanging out for an hour with your friends. Exactly. <laughs> and a cat. And, and a cat. And the cat. <laughs> yeah. And for everyone else in the audience, Rebecca, Brian, Anita, and whoever else might be watching, thanks for hanging out with us and truly entertaining us with the comments section. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We love you, Bri Bri. Good night. Good night. Next week, guys. Thank you.